Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an exclusive Liberty Real Estate Fund webinar, Net Lease Secrets. I'm your host, Adam Carswell, joined by my good friend, boss, mentor, uh, and single tenant triple net lease master, Michael Flight. Michael, we have quite a show in store today. And I know I already kind of said this before we press record, but again, for, the, for those joining us on the replay, any ice breaking comments for our audience? Uh, well, I'm uh, really happy to be here. It's a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up today. And we hope that this is going to be very educational for you. We believe strongly in net lease properties and net lease real estate. And uh, why don't I share my screen so we can go in and, and kind of talk about um, who we are and um, you know why, why we're doing this. So Let's go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we are Liberty Fund. And uh, Liberty Fund is a net lease property fund. Uh, the unique thing about Liberty Fund, it is also uh, one of the first security token uh, fund offerings, and it will be the first net lease security token offering. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, but what we're gonna do is get into a little bit about you know who we are here. So um, who am I and who am Adam to do, be doing this? Uh, I am the co-founder. Uh, I like to describe myself as co-creator, co-owner and co-manager of Liberty Real Estate Fund. Uh, we decided to embark on a path to put together one of the safest, stablest and uh, most uh, uh, um, monthly income generating type of a fund back in probably early 2019. And we've got our portfolio mix put together. And the, the hard part has been being a pioneer on a security token. Uh, I have been in the uh, commercial real estate business, uh, mo mostly shopping centers and triple net leases since 1986. So I'm going on 35 years young. Uh, and we also have had uh, and founded a number of companies, including Concordia Realty, which still does uh, property management and uh, is still the managing partner on a number of institutional uh, deals. Uh, I want to introduce my partner, Adam Carswell. Um, I like to call him the voice of liberty because he also does the Liberland show, which is uh, a libertarian startup country in the middle of Europe. So Adam, do you have anything to add? Just want to say uh, again, honor to be here. Thank you for the detailed introduction. Um, and you know, guys, I think Michael's probably playing down his own resume a little bit here. This is probably one eighth of the things that, that he's accomplished. It's really been an honor um, just getting to know him and work with him over the years. Uh, I always like to joke and say that I was lucky for him to kind of bring me into the Concordia, or excuse me, the Liberty Real Estate Fund family. And uh, the cool thing was that we really first connected um, at a conference where we were able to you know, openly just talk about how we see the world and perceive the world and sharing similar worldviews with a mentor and a boss is just a complete slam dunk. And um, yeah, you know, here we are making, <laughs> producing webinars on Netly Secrets and taking all things we do to the next level. So Michael, really looking forward to what you've got for us here today. And uh, to further expound on what Adam was talking about, uh, our uh, worldviews are free markets and generating wealth. And that's what we're most interested in. And I forgot to say that Adam and I uh, also co-host the Nothing But Net podcast, which is all about triple net leases, how to invest in triple net leases. And it's a little more in detail than what we're going to present here today. So with that, why don't we go to the uh, first net lease secret? Um, it's really not a net lease secret, but real estate is the original asset class. Don't let them tell you about bonds, the stock market, and all the rest of that. Those are newbies compared to the 2000 year history of real estate. It is the world's most proven asset class. Uh, no other, and as Gary Keller here uh, says, I'm gonna just, sorry about this. Um, okay. Uh, no other investment has such a, a consistent and positive effect on the average person's net worth as real estate ownership. It's Gary Keller, a millionaire real estate investor, a millionaire real estate broker, and one of my favorite books, The One Thing. Uh, so real estate is not an alternative asset class, as you can see. Um, and we've had a bunch of uh, information lately about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and stuff. 
they it has jumped significantly within the past year, but it's still only one trillion dollars versus two hundred eighty trillion dollars of assets that are locked up in real estate. Real estate is a tangible asset. Real estate has a bunch of stuff. Real estate is actually bigger than the stock markets and oil and all the rest of that. So what we like to, about uh, commercial real estate investing is you get regular cash flow. It generates wealth and preser preserves wealth. The net lease product and net lease investments are some of the best at generating wealth and preserving wealth. Uh, many high net worth families, many uh, institutional investors use this as their go-to to preserve wealth. And we'll get into that later as to why that is. It's a hard asset. Uh, it's, you've got the security of tangible value. Um, what we also like is one of the tricks for an inflation hedge is you can borrow the money now uh, and those, mo those dollars are worth more. So you can buy more, more money or more uh, asset with leverage. Uh, it is a hedge against inflation. Uh, the nice thing about net lease assets is most of them have built-in escalations for rent. Uh, it has some unique uh, tax advantages, especially um, with depreciation. Some of the net lease properties also have bonus depreciation because of the way the uh, IRS classifies them. Uh, and then real estate has always been historically stable, slow to rise, slow to fall. And what we will get into is that net lease properties are probably some of the most super stable uh, assets that you can get into. Uh, love this quote from Andrew Carnegie, 90% of all millionaires become so through owning real estate. Uh, so what is a triple net property? Uh, or it, you, you could also hear uh, people will call it an NNN, they'll call it a net lease, uh, they'll call it a triple net lease. Uh, and what we're talking about here is single tenant net lease properties. So a triple net property is the tenant pays not only the rent, but they also pay the real estate taxes, they pay for the insurance, and they also pay for the maintenance. A pure triple net property, you as the landlord will have no expenses other than if you hired a property manager, a bookkeeper, or a, um, and, and you're going to have to like pay somebody or do your own tax returns. But other than that, you're going to have no expenses on a pure net, net, net property. Um, the, we can remember what the triple nets are with the acronym TIM, which is taxes, insurance, and maintenance. And uh, my buddy who I've had dinner with, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, real estate investing, even on a very small scale, remains a tried and true means of building an individual's wealth and cash flow. And uh, before you continue, I do want to say, I mean, you had dinner with Robert Kiyosaki. For any of our listeners who might not know who that is, can you? Uh, Robert uh, Kiyosaki, I, uh, I, almost everybody knows that, that I've ever met who's gotten into the real estate business after 2000 has read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, I will say that I've never read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but Robert Kiyosaki uh, has been probably the individual that has gotten the most people into real estate investing uh, because everybody that I've talked to uh, that has gotten in after 2000 with only one exception has said, yeah, I, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I realized I really wanted to get into real estate investment and get a passive cash flow. So that's who Robert Kiyosaki is. So the best thing about net lease properties is what we like to describe as mailbox money. Um, and it's this is actually old fashioned because it's not actually mailbox money anymore. And we'll get into that a little bit. But why would you want to get involved with multifamily apartment buildings where you've got vacancy, you've got to pay real estate taxes, you've got insurance, um, you've got all this stuff you've got to do. You can see on the other end there, the net lease, uh, you don't pay anything. Maybe you might pay some property management. So that's why the title of our podcast in my upcoming book is Nothing But Net, because it's nothing but net income. And that's what we love about net lease properties. 
So here I you actually own- I plug for the podcast. You say you guys can go to, tri- <laughs> go to triplenet.re. That's triplenet.re to get yeah, more on so the podcast. Triplenet.re or nothingbutnet.us. But uh, we really, I, I think the triple net real estate really, you know, for a website was a great name. Um, so I own this apartment building back um, in the, the early 2000s. Uh, you know, I, it, it was something that I owned with some partners. Uh, it, it, it was just nothing but a pain in, in the, the um, well, pain. So and, <laughs> you started uh, with nothing, nothing, but I'm like, there's definitely not nothing but net. What was yeah, so, so we're, we're not going to, to get into that, but I, I can tell you that even though it was a, in a great suburb and uh, we just had all kinds of issues with renovations. We had issues with tenants trashing the building. We also had issues with uh, one particular tenant dealing drugs out of the property. Uh, and so what I like to point to is that CVS right there down in Florida, you can see it right next to the, to the Gulf of Mexico, beautiful thing right there. Um, the only drugs they're dealing out of that CVS is legal drugs. So we, we don't have to deal with that. Um, so I like to describe it as um, no, no dealing with tenants, no dealing with to- uh, toilets and no dealing with termites or any of that other stuff. Uh, it is a stable uh, long-term property. And what I'm saying about mailbox money is the tenants actually, uh, these, these large national tenants don't even mail their checks anymore. Most of them pay by what's called ACH. So you get your uh, rent money deposited monthly in, directly into your bank account. And without a doubt, uh, they're all set up for either five, five to uh, three days before the first of the month. So I can tell you with regularity that CVS, with uh, Walgreens, McDonald's, uh, McDonald's actually sends their checks eight days ahead of the month. So it sometimes screws us up on the bookkeeping because you've got that money sitting in the bank account when you're doing a reconciliation. But that's what, you know, the beauty of it is you don't even have to go to the mailbox and, and you don't even have to go to the bank anymore. It's just right there. And uh, Marshall Field was a, uh, uh, a department store uh, owner, and he was famous for saying, give the lady what she wants. Uh, but he was also one of the most savvy real estate investors. And so it, I love this quote, buying real estate is not only the best way, the quickest way, the safest way, but the only way to become wealthy. So there are some other ways you can do, um, you know, be a Bitcoin millionaire and stuff like that. But it's a little bit scary doing that stuff too. Um, so the other thing that we really like uh, about net lease properties is you get some huge financial strength behind it. So um, you get targeted tenants uh, that uh, have billion dollar capitalization. So like I was saying, these tenants are set up to pay rent, okay? They're set up to pay their expenses. Once you get in their system and all the rest of it, it is just like clockwork. And so you can see here, these are some of the tenants that um, we are investing in. And, uh, you know, I, I love to, to point out um, Banfield Pet Hospital. So Banfield Pet Hospital is owned by the Mars m M&M, and you know, candy company. Uh, it's a family and they've got billions of dollars in sales. So why wouldn't you want to do like a pet hospital, beautiful, and you get that type of guarantee? Uh, I'll take that guarantee over some of the other tenants that I've leased to. I mean, I've had some wonderful, you know, tenants, uh, but I've also had some tenants that were really horrible in multifamily. Uh, we were doing single family rentals. Uh, I, you know, we've done offices in, in all the rest of it. And by and large, I would rather deal with these tenants. They're professional. And most of the time you actually don't end up dealing with anybody. The, the only time you need to, to end up dealing with them, like I said, on the property management side is to make sure that they've paid their real estate taxes, uh, but they typically pay the real estate taxes directly um, and because they want control of the real estate taxes. They don't want you missing paying the real estate taxes. 
and you need to make sure that they've uh, paid their insurance and listed you as an additional insured. That's the most, and uh, we, we like to go out and visit the property and make sure that the property is being taken care of. But the other good thing about these properties is the tenants have an interest in maintaining the property because they're doing business out of the property. So they don't want a crummy looking, shabby looking thing. And they're going to be maintaining their uh, HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, because they don't want that air conditioner to go out in the middle of a 102 degree day. Uh, they especially don't want it to go out where I'm living at right now, because it's uh, probably around six degrees outside. So they, they want that and they're gonna maintain it. And they're also, like I said, gonna maintain the property uh, as if they owned it because they're doing business out of it. And that's why we like to say net lease properties are like bonds wrapped in real estate. You get this super huge corporate financial strength uh, and you also get great locations in real estate, hard tangible real estate. So it is uh, much better than bonds because you also get the benefits of depreciation and you get the, the hard tangible asset of real estate. And without going too far down that rabbit hole though, I mean, as far as investing in bonds right now, I'm sure you could also just comparatively show that's probably not the best idea in general. I can, and I'd like you to hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> because I've got a bonus secret for you that we're going to talk about that. There we go. All right. All right. So um, one of the other things that's really great about net lease properties and what makes them so good is that there's long-term lease agreements. So uh, the typical lease agreements are anywhere from five years to 10 years to 15. Uh, we've even done 50 year leases. So uh, these are long-term leases and also with the long-term leases, there's built-in rent escalations so that you, with not having to pay any expenses, you know what you're going to be getting all the way out for 10 years. So as I said before, it's like a bond wrapped in real estate. You get a long-term lease agreement. You don't need to worry about turnover. So you don't need to worry about um, owning a single family home and that tenant deciding to move out on you. And so you're going to have some vacancy factor in there. Um, these tenants are in there for the long term. They're in there, they take care of the property. And um, you know that if you've got somebody like, uh, let's say, um, a, a Jiffy Lube, Jiffy Lube is actually owned by Shell Oil Company. So even though we can talk about, you know, uh, global warming and stuff like that, I'm saying that the oil companies are probably going to be around and probably going to be good payers for at least the next 20 to 30 years. So, but I, I, I love having, you know, Shell Oil as a credit. Uh, I love having, you know, 7-Eleven as a credit. Uh, some of these other guys, uh, they're just like fantastic. If you do a Whole Foods, you get a trillion dollar company in Amazon as your, your credit. Um, or we're mainly focused on retail but you can get an Amazon warehouse. There's all kinds of, uh, you know, the, the Amazon distribution centers. Uh, I saw it an Amazon uh, office, triple net office where they own the whole building. So you can do this with all kinds of different uh, property types. One of the most unique uh, triple net properties uh, deals I've seen is they uh, did a uh, triple net leases with a bunch of casinos out in Las Vegas. So. Caesar's uh, Palace out in Las Vegas is actually a triple net deal. So it's uh, owned by one owner, it's an institutional owner, and the, uh, uh, I forget who the, I think it's MGM Gaming, uh, actually runs the casino and takes care of everything and maintains the property like it's their own property. And uh, they've gotten, the, the reason why they did that was they didn't want uh, the real estate sitting on their books. So they freed that up, um, were able to take the cash out and uh, it works well for the real estate investors. It works well for the company that's operating it. And uh, 
A Random Walk Down Wall Street is an older book, but it's a pretty good book. And uh, one of the things he said is, is that I continue to like about real estate is that it has been, and I think will continue to be one of the more reliable inflation hedges among all the asset classes. So we uh, know by some of the things that are happening in the market right now, that there is a lot of inflation running through uh, and more than likely there will be inflation because there's a lot of currency printing right now. And I don't say money printing, I say currency printing because they are just, and uh, uh, the, the Fed guy, the other, like a few months ago, just said, well, it's not actually even printing money anymore. It's all digital. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think there's a very strong point you make there between the, the difference basically between money and currency. Could you just briefly explain what you mean? Because there's a, a big difference I think most people aren't aware of. Well, money is actually something that is tied to something and has some value, whereas currency is just kind of fiat. So, um, and if you'd like to jump in on that, you can. <laughs> Are you saying me jump in on it? No, I'm just joking around. Okay, so. we got the random walk down Wall Street. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so the other great thing about net lease properties is the safety, stability, and security. So when I was talking about institutional investors, high net worth investors, family offices, this is their go-to property because it's what they call a core asset. So you can take a flyer on value add things. You can um, get more information on, on some of that stuff. But the big thing is, is that you know that month in, month out, over the years, um, these properties just kick off cash flow. So people are using these properties. Like I said, they're like bonds wrapped in real estate. If you are looking for yield right now and everybody is chasing yield right now, um, these are the best things that you can find for yield and also the safest and securest. So we've, uh, and we're, we're doing more research, but we've got research on some companies that have operated in that lease space since 1986. And that, that particular company has operated between 100% occupancy and its lowest occupancy has been 97.5%. This is an average um, occupancy, but you can see, um, even though apartments have been doing, you know, really well in terms of occupancy, they've never maintained the safe, safe, stable, um, straight line across the top there, which uh, single tenant net leases have. And that's because, again, we get into the, the long term leases and we get into they're used for businesses and they're large corporations paying the rent. And uh, I've used this uh, a number of times before by land. They're not making it anymore. Um, so, but we, we might have to start looking at buying land on Mars or the moon really soon. So, but uh, uh, they're making, they're making islands over there in Dubai where you were, you were just. Oh yeah, I, I will say that. So <laughs> in Hawaii, there's more land being made and uh, Dubai, uh, they, they've done all kinds of uh, man-made islands. It's really cool. I actually stayed on the Palm Jumeirah and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, it was fantastic. So it, don't get me started on Dubai because it's really cold here right now and I want to go back to Dubai. So if I can get my uh, <laughs> associate Sam to set it up, we're, we're headed back to Dubai in, in March. So what, uh, real quick, what were you there for? I was there for a family office summit. I was speaking on uh, our security token offering. So, and I, I went over there in October. We uh, also, I was interviewed for CEO Magazine and um, CNBC Arabia uh, too. So it was a fantastic trip. I can't say enough good about Dubai, but we're not talking about travel right now. This isn't a travel log. This is a net lease property thing. So we'll go to location advantage. As I said before, um, I am a real estate specialist. Uh, I'm sorry, retail real estate specialist. Uh, I started in 1986 doing retail real estate. I started as a real estate broker. Uh, we have done all kinds of things. We've taken large malls and actually demalled them 
and you're going to see in the future there's going to be a lot of demalling going on because uh, quite frankly there's too many malls built out so you're going to see the super what they call fortress malls uh, being still uh, attractive and uh, being something that a lot of people will more than likely go to uh, and then the class B and class C malls uh, you're probably going to see those repurposed into something else in, in alternative use. Uh, but I can tell you um, what I really like about the retail triple net leases is that it's got that if you buy them right, they've always got fantastic locations. So you can see this CVS right here. Um, this is at ground zero. Uh, there's probably close to 300,000 people within a, a few miles of here. We don't count the cemeteries off to the side because otherwise we get like a million people, uh, but you know, you can't count dead people in your demographics. So, but uh, you've got main and main visibility and this is what we look for. You've got really strong demographics. Uh, we look for uh, Southern states. We like to call them the smile states because uh, the, the, the um, population is uh, moving. Uh, I, I heard the term the other, a, a few weeks ago, swarm to warm. And since the invention of the air conditioner, uh, people have been moving from the north to the south. So since the 1950s, the general migration trend, before the 1950s, the migration trend was from south to north, uh, to the industrialized north. That kind of reversed in 1950s. And with the COVID pandemic, it's really accelerated. So uh, there's just been phenomenal growth. And there's also been a lot of population loss in Illinois, Massachusetts, uh, New York, and to some extent, California. But California isn't about uh, weather. It's more about, uh, you know, well, Illinois is a failed state and just dysfunctional government. We, we, we go where places want uh, people to do, you know, commerce and business. Uh, but the other thing that I really like about retail properties is that with this type of location, it's usually always really easy to repurpose. So if it can't be repurposed as a CVS, uh, you could throw a dollar store in there. Uh, since CVS or McDonald's or any one of these guys already has a drive through, um, you can repurpose it to, to a number of things that would really want to drive through. Uh, the thing I like about Texas is they have drive-through liquor stores. I, I'm not a big drinker, but you know, <laughs> you, you, you can't beat the convenience of a drive-through liquor store. You can just shoot your gun wherever you want in Texas too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that is, but I, I do know that in the it, it, when I was going to shopping center conventions and triple net conventions in the early 1990s. Uh, one of the big uh, conferences for the ICSE, which is the International Council of Shopping Centers, there was always a leasing conference held down in Dallas, Texas. And so there were certain places where you could drink and drive in Texas, and there were certain places where you could shoot and drive, but you couldn't shoot and drink and drive because you needed <laughs> one hand on the wheel. So, but anyway, we're, we've that's digressed, but I, I don't <laughs> know if you, that's like the case anymore. And I, I don't recommend shooting, you know, out of a car anyway. So, or drinking and driving. <laughs> I just thought, found that fascinating. So it's a that whole other country down there. So, I mean, we're at seven now. You said you got some bonus secrets. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we do. So uh, this is a, you know, best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago let's invest in real estate now. Time to invest is now. Uh, the key takeaways. So what we talked about before, and these are, are pretty much key takeaways for the tenants that I work with and the properties that I like. Um, some of these are not going to be, uh, if you do any type of office triple net, if you do any type of um, industrial triple net, if you do any type of uh, distribution triple net or warehouse, uh, it's not always going to be freestanding uh, on major streets uh, because, you know, some of those properties might be in the middle of an industrial park or, or someplace else. But the great thing about retail properties is, um, depending on the size and everything, it also, you know, since they're at usually at Main and Main in great locations, they can repurpose be repurposed for anything. 
And even if everything goes online, they can still be a, a last mile type of a, you know, pickup place or something for somebody. So uh, it's got options. Uh, Long-term leases with renewal options and rent increases. So many type, many of the leases have yearly rent increases uh, anywhere from one to, I've seen them as high as 3%. Some of the longer term leases also have a thing in there where they tie the rent increase to the lesser of the CPI all urban index increase or uh, a, a set amount like maybe two or 3%. Uh, in times of high inflation back in the 70s, they were doing that. We've gotten out of that. I think we're, we've seen some more of that coming back. Uh, some also, some of the tenants also have what's called a percentage rent. Um, so if they're paying a percentage of sales, so if their sales go over a certain amount uh, and the prices rise a certain amount, it gives you built-in uh, inflation protection with the percentage rent clause. Uh, we like that the area, it, it uh, generates significant demand for replacement tenants. So if it's a great location, uh, it's easy to release. Uh, the advantageous lease structure is that um, you smooth out your income because you don't have to worry that uh, real estate taxes are gonna pop up really high. In here in the Chicago area, what we're experiencing right now is uh, with all the snow, we have higher snow removal cost. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about getting somebody out there to shovel. You don't need to, to do anything with that because the tenant absorbs that extra cost of the extra snow removal if you get a bad snow season. The tenant absorbs the cost if you, you know, happen to, to have extra cleanup cost or, or anything like that. Um, so we really like that. Uh, and just to get into um, the tenants prefer to lease because they don't, they, they get penalized uh, by the stock market for keeping real estate on their books. So the, the stock market, if they're a publicly traded company, and even if they're not a publicly traded company, they would much rather use the working capital uh, and put it to use in their business rather than being real estate owners. The other thing is, is that um, it's easier to um, uh, model their business and scale their business. So for example, if you are Dollar General, uh, instead of having to raise a few hundred million dollars to a billion dollars to do all these capital improvements and build out all these stores, they can go and get what's called a merchant builder and the merchant builder will go out, find the properties, develop the properties for them. And they'll just say, I want to be in this area. Find me, you know, the location. And so the builder will go out, find them the location, build it. They'll borrow the money uh, from a bank and they'll turnkey it. So it's built specifically for that tenant. The tenant just moves right in. All they have to do is fixture their store. So it eliminates, you know, extra personnel that they would need. It eliminates the uh, having to have the real estate uh, finesse and also go through and have the time delays of, of developing a property. Sometimes I was involved with developing a property in California and it was uh, seven years. So uh, that eliminates that. That's why the tenants just want, they, they're not in the real estate business. They're in their own business. Um, and so why don't we move on to the next one, uh, which are the bonus section. So, right. uh, so just, to, just to go through, uh, real estate is original asset. Uh, and Adam, we're going to have a replay on this, correct? Yes, the replay will be up within 24 hours of you guys catching this. And, okay, um, so, <laughs> so I don't have to go through these. You guys can, can go back and, and take a Screenshot look at these. Them. But here's the bonus uh, you know, secrets. Okay. So number one, advantages over stocks and bonds. So historically there's been low returns for municipal bonds, uh, investment grade, uh, corporate grade. Uh, really, if you've got your money in a bank account, you're losing money like ridiculously low. And if you're investing in municipal bonds, not only are you getting historically low rates, because I think the municipal bonds right now are, are right around like uh, an average of 2% or so, 
but you've got a, a high amount of risk in those bonds because all these, uh, you know, like the city of Chicago, they're, they're basically bankrupt. They're never gonna be able to pay their pensions. The state of Illinois just, um, and this is one of the higher yielding bonds, but the state of Illinois came out uh, with a bond and I think it was like four and a half percent. It's like, why wouldn't you get a super stable piece of real estate not tied to the state of Illinois, not tied to any you know political issues or stuff like that? I, I would much rather have a, uh, a great piece of real estate in Texas, in Nevada, in Florida, or any one of these other states, because uh, you know that you're going to get appreciation there too. Because all the you know, so the demographics don't support those pension funds, uh, and it's it's also done better than um, you know uh, dividend paying stocks. So if you're investing in dividend paying stocks, uh, for example, utilities and stuff. Uh, you're probably getting, you know, right now somewhere in the, the three and a half percent range. So it's done way better than that. And then the, the other thing is uh, the, the next bonus secret, which we really like to talk about, and that's why we're talking about Liberty Real Estate Fund, is uh, one of the disadvantages of net lease properties, single tenant net lease properties, is if the tenant does leave or if the tenant does go into bankruptcy, then you do have a, a space. And so we don't mind uh, when the tenants do turn over because that most of the time our properties are in really good areas and it gives us an opportunity that the tenant might've been paying, like let's say, you know, when they signed the lease 10 years ago, it was a certain amount. And then the, the rents have typically gone up. And so you can actually do better on, you know, putting in a replacement tenant in there. But you're going to have some downtime. You're going to have to put in a little bit of capital to do that. And so one of the things when we decided to set up Liberty Real Estate Fund is we said, how could you get something super safe, super stable, and diversify your risk uh, through diversified, um, you know, not only locations, as you can see here, but also diversify your uh, credit uh you know, who's paying the rent. So, and diversify the industries. So you've got people like Dollar Tree, which is a dollar store. You've got Aldi, which is grocery stores. I love Aldi. And Aldi's uh, opening up another 500 stores this year. Uh, Aldi has some phenomenal credit. They're owned by a giant German corporation. Um, and the there's two brothers. Uh, one guy owns all the Aldis and the other... German brother owns the Trader Joe's. So they're, they're two specialty grocery stores, but we love them. Um, you know, as we talked about before, uh, I, I've had people ask me, uh, well, what if everybody goes to Uber and just has Uber drive their cars? It's like, well, at some point, you're going to have to have some place to take care of these cars. So you've got Pep Boys, you've got this. Um, even if, you know, let's say Shell, um, you know, isn't selling uh, gas anymore, there's going to be, you know, things where people are going to need convenience stores and stuff like that. I don't, I mean, maybe stuff is going to go completely 100% online, but people still need convenience, which is why we also like drug stores. I mean, people have said, well, isn't Amazon going into drugs right now? It's like, well, they are. But uh, you have to realize that CVS also owns Aetna Health System. So anybody that's in, you know, in the Aetna Health Plan, they're not going to be able to go into like an Amazon thing. Uh, CVS and Walgreens are both adding uh, medical, you know, in exam facilities in there. And the other thing is, is that the large majority of the items sold, the, the, the traffic is driven by the pharmacy but it's basically like a 7-Eleven in the front of the store. It, it's like a mini grocery store. And the cool thing during COVID is both of these tenants not only were doing drive up COVID testing, but Walgreens was also doing drive up grocery shopping. So you could just order online and then drive right through the drive through to pick up your stuff, which is even better than you know a grocery store where you have to go in and, and pick up your stuff, even if you like buy online from Walmart and things like that. So that's really cool. We also really like the medical stuff because uh, you know people like DaVita, 
Um, if you've got issues with your kidneys, you're going to have to go to DaVita and they have to be, you know, within a certain mile of uh, people so that to drive through. Uh, and it's the same thing. It's like people are always going to need dental. Uh, it's going to be very hard to, to get your teeth done online. So that's why we decided to put together the Liberty portfolio. Um, so you've got diversification of geography, you've got diversification of risk, you've got diversification of corporate credit, and you've got diversification of um, industries. And a lot of people say, well, you're in retail, isn't everything gonna go online? What I was just talking about is we designed this to be internet resistant. And part of the internet resistance has also uh, brought up the fact that it seems to be pandemic resistant because all these tenants that we are putting into our portfolio have all been and all done really well throughout the pandemic. And with that, we're done. All right, <laughs> time for Q and A. We, uh, we got about, uh, yeah, about 10 minutes here. So I saw okay. we had some questions coming through, Michael. One thing I was, I was laughing at there too, um, you can go ahead and, and turn off your screen share so we can get the full screen of you and I. But um, he said getting your teeth done online, that might be kind of hard. I, I imagine it would be. So <laughs> it's a, a good investment strategy. So uh, a few questions, Michael, I don't know if you're able to pull it up. I'll read this first one off for you and then we'll work our way through here. Guys, as I mentioned, we got about 10 minutes for this. So feel free to fire away your questions from Michael. The first one is thank you for all of the positives. What are some negatives we as investors should also be mindful or aware of? Please be honest. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's nothing ever wrong with a net lease. Okay. Um, what you really do need to, to know about is you are investing in a business. So you are not only investing in the property itself. So you have to make sure that the property is well located, but you are also investing in the business because the business is the thing that's paying the rent. So you need to make sure that that business is going to be in business for the next 10 years. You need to make sure that that business is well capitalized. You need to make sure that they have a good brand name. Uh, you need to make sure that they um, you know, uh, have the type of financing that they need and that they're selling products or they're building something, they're manufacturing something or they're distributing something that people actually use and want. So that's the biggest concern with net lease properties. The next biggest concern with net lease properties is turnover. So if the, you do get tenants that do go into bankruptcy, so um, you, you do get tenants that will go into bankruptcy. And at that point, you're gonna have to like release the space and go out and get somebody new. So what you should do upfront when you're evaluating is make sure that the space is a desirable space, it is a leasable space, and it's something that could be potentially repurposed so that you've got an extra strategy. So those are a few of the, the negatives. Um, the other negative is, is that you need to make sure with certain tenants, and I'm, I'm going to call out a certain tenant, but I, I don't like, I, I, I love them as a tenant, um, but their lease structure is um, disadvantageous. So you're going to see if you go out and start looking at triple net properties, the biggest, uh, the, the most out there are the dollar stores and the drug stores. If you take a look at uh, some of the Walgreens leases, and if you take a look at some of the brand new dollar general leases, they're 15 year leases without any rent increase. I would not advise buying those because you've got no upside in your rent. Um, and, and so it, most of the other tenants uh, have some sort of rent increase. As I said before, uh, some of them have rent increases every, uh, every year. Uh, we actually just finished a lease with a tenant where um, because of the, the issues with COVID and it was a rough year, uh, we extended them. So the rent stayed the same for three years uh, and then uh, jumped up for the next two years and then increase for the next three years and then jumps up for the, the next two years. So you get four rent increases or actually three rent increases in there. Uh, the most common is the rent increases every five years. And it's typically, you're gonna want to make sure that the rent increases at a minimum of 
or and anywhere from 12 to 15 percent is more like it. So, awesome. so those are just some of the, the negatives. Do you have any negatives that you've experienced, Adam? Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with what you said. I mean, I, I know you're updating me as we go through these these uh, negotiations of leases. So I was aware of that one. Um, I do, but I have something else coming to mind here and I want to make sure we zone in on it before I forget. And it's kind of tied to this next question, which um, is from another anonymous attendee. It's when we invest, will we own the land and the building in all cases? And what I want to follow up on that is um, the Liberty Real Estate Fund is opening soon, right? Like, is the, can you can we yeah, disclose we'll, any information we'll, on that? We'll, we'll hit that at the end of all the questions. But actually, we, we should be ready to start accepting. Uh, we are accepting reservations right now for Liberty Real Estate Fund. It's for accredited investors. It's um, $50,000 minimum of investment. And we are accepting reservations. We do have a limit on the number of investors that we can take in the fund. So it's limited to 2,000 investors uh, per the SEC. It's a regulated fund. Uh, the cool thing about the security token is that after a one-year lockup period, you could actually trade out of your security token or list your tokens or token on, on an exchange or sell them through a broker. Or me and you, Adam, you can decide that you want to sell like $50,000 of your token. And I can say, I want to buy $50,000. Um, so it just gives you extra liquidity options. There's some other cool options that we are confirming are legal and not money laundering. One of which is you invest in dollars and you could potentially take it out in another currency. Now, number one, our attorneys and everybody else are confirming that that is legal to do, but the technology will allow you to do it. Um, and then to answer the next, what was the other question you had? Yeah, and it's kind of a two part question uh, from the same uh, question asker. <laughs> uh, when we invest, will we own the land and the building in all cases? And also, do you purchase, do you, do we buy multi-tenant triple net? Okay. So um, there are, are different types. So there are ground leases, which you only own the land. And that's not the type of properties that we invest in. And while ground leases are great, I would not recommend investing in them because you don't get the benefits of depreciation. You cannot depreciate the ground. So ground leases are the absolute least work you'll ever do. And they're the absolute super safest thing that you can invest in because uh, you just lease a piece of land to the tenant and the tenant is responsible for building their own building and doing their own stuff. But as I said before, you don't own the building, so you cannot depreciate it. So that's the, the key thing you need to make sure. The other thing that you need to make sure is a lot of brokers will put in their offering memorandum that it's a net, net, net lease. You need to look and make sure, because sometimes they'll say net, 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 or NNN, and then they'll put in their landlord responsibility, roof and structure. That is not a triple net lease. That is a double net lease. Uh, in a shopping center, they, we do describe them as triple net leases, but the landlord, because it's a common you know, roof and a common structure, is responsible for maintaining the structure. And we bill back all the expenses to snow plowing, uh, you know, parking lot sweeping, uh, replacing sidewalks and all that to the tenants. And that's part of common area maintenance. But you want a triple net lease where you're owning the building so that you can get the advantages of depreciation. And in uh, convenience stores and gas stations, you can get bonus depreciation because the IRS, um, the, the federal regulations say that that's a certified fueling center. So there, and there's some other tenants out there like that, that you can get extra bonus depreciation and, and other benefits in the triple net space that you might not get in uh, you know other type of product or Fantastic. other type of investments. Yeah, no, very very helpful to know, and um, especially in the ground lease piece, I never thought about really. <laughs> that is probably one of the most stable you could you could look for out there. But I do um, you know we just touched on it there, and I want to continue to to bring some some light to it. Do my marketing piece here for the Liberty Real Estate Fund opening. 
Um, we're going to wind it down here now too, Michael. So anything that you haven't mentioned already as far as what to expect? Um, you know, I know there are certain legalities in regards to what you can and can't share and discuss. So I guess just let us know everything we can about the fund and how we can get prepared for that. Well, it's going to be a, a $30 million fund. Uh, we expect to open the fund and start taking uh, actual investments uh, in mid-March. Uh, we are taking reservations now. If somebody wants information on the fund, we can send you out investment sheets and, and other information that you need. Just contact us at hello at libertyfund.io. That's hello at libertyfund.io. And we'd be more than happy to um, you know, go through it. Some of the slides from this are, are from our investor deck. So it, it goes into more detail as to the types of properties that we're investing in, the types of uh, industries we're investing in and uh, our experience. And I, I can tell you, we have extensive experience with this. Uh, I can tell you personally, I've been through four downturns uh, and I'm not gonna tell you that I've had everything that can go wrong, go wrong because I've had enough go wrong <laughs> that I do know. But I can tell you that I, I'm not going to panic and we are not going to panic because we've been through so many difficult situations. As I said before, we bought malls that were failing. We, you know, emptied them out. We tore them down. We've gotten into problems with like environmental problems. We've gotten into, I mean, you know, I, I could tell you war stories. So if somebody, I, I will be speaking live in Houston, uh, February 27th at the Multifamily Investor Network Conference. So anybody that wants to hear a war story, they can just buy me a drink and I'd be more than happy to like <laughs> bend their ear forever. Yeah, we've had a lot of engagement with our attendees as well. Thank you guys for the questions. As Michael mentioned, uh, you can send an email to hello at libertyfund.io. If there's any questions that went unanswered today, I'd be happy to um, address them there. Aaron, if you could just make sure we get that email address in there, Shrove as well on the Facebook feed, that's hello at libertyfund.io. We look forward to connecting with you guys and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, thank you again so much for investing your most valuable resource with us here today, your time. This is a Liberty Real Estate Fund webinar, Net Lease Secrets. Um, if you enjoyed this message and you're with us here on the replay, be sure to give us a thumbs up, share it with your network, subscribe on the platform you're tuned in on. Tuned in on. We really appreciate your lis listenership and want to keep bringing you this high quality content. Uh, Michael, here we are, finish line. Any, any final remarks? I, I really, the, the only thing I, I really do want to thank you for, for showing up and for it, it. We really are all about education. Uh, this is an asset class in real estate that is not well known. Uh, it, like I said, it's one of the secret asset classes out there. Uh, institutions love it. Family offices love it. High net worth investors love it. But there's just not a whole bunch of information for people to, to learn about it. So we really do appreciate you showing up and coming and thank you very much. And if you have any questions on libertyfund.io, there is more information on investing in uh, real estate and on the Nothing But Net podcast. If you want to take a deeper dive, um, Adam and I discussed how to look at a location, uh, you know, what some of the benefits are. We go into to deep, deep detail. And the other thing is we have some really brilliant uh, people that are in the space doing the work, have been doing the work. I, I've got a network and I'm, I'm not bragging, but I've got a network of people that I've known for 30, 35 years. And these guys have been in the business for like 40 years, you know, 50 years, uh, you know, 20 years. And it, they're specialists in financing. They're specialists in, in brokerage. They're specialists in 1031s. They're specialists uh, my friend Alex DiMaturco, uh, who Adam knows now, uh, developed properties in 48 states from Alaska to Puerto Rico and ran one of the largest re net lease real estate investment funds in the country. It was a multi-billion dollar real estate fund. So that's the type of high level experience that you're getting. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Really appreciate it, everybody.
Sure. And yeah, for anyone out there who's, you know, if you're tuned in and you're looking to go deeper, maybe you have, for example, a podcast, if you check out that Nothing But Net podcast, you know, Michael just mentioned his friend, Alex DiMaterico, there's some talent that we've had on the show that, in my opinion, as a podcast host, I'm like, how have these guys, like, no one even knows these people. <laughs> we're, we're kind of getting lucky, in my opinion, to, to be the first ones to bring them onto the airwaves. So go check those out. And again, if you want any connections made, reach out to us. Um, and one more big thank you to our team, uh, Courtney Stone, <laughs> Mohamedul Islam, Jordan Stack, Sam Halawi, Jason Ricks, and so many more. You guys are fantastic to work with. We really appreciate you helping us put this together. And uh, one more big thank you to our audience here today. You guys rock. This was Net Lease Secrets presented by Liberty Real Estate Fund. My name is Adam, Adam Carswell. Thank you for tuning in. And we will catch you in the next Liberty Real Estate Fund webinar. Thank you. <laughs>